If you ask anyone to name a famous Nottingham boxer, you'll generally get two answers. Most recently, Carl the Cobra Frotch, the ex-super middleweight champion of the world. And if they think hard enough, they'll remember the name of Bendigo, bare fist fighter of the 19th century. The name's still famous throughout Nottingham today. There's a pub, a bar, even a fictional book named after him. But what about the other Nottingham fighter, Bendigo's great rival, and the man who allegedly gives his name to a famous London landmark known the world over? I am, of course, referring to Ben Corns of Hucknall, the forgotten fighter, ex-heavyweight champion of all England. Ben Cornt was born in Hucknall Torcard on the 22nd of March 1815, the son of a Newstead Abbey gamekeeper. He grew to stand six foot two inches tall, weighing in at 18 stone. He was strong and durable, with a deep barrel laugh. Back in those days, there was no Marquess of Queensbury rules. This was proper bare-knuckled fighting known as pugilism. Cornt wasn't a technical fighter by any means, with sledgehammer fists and strong arms that he used to crush his opponents. He was willing and strong, but also slow and clumsy. Little is known of his early career, however we know much about his battles with another local fighter. On the 21st of July 1835, Cornt fought the local hero William Bendigo Thompson over 22 rounds. But Bendigo frustrated him continually by dropping to his knees each time Corn tried to squeeze him, this being the indication of the end of a round, and he was disqualified finally for striking Bendigo while he was sitting in his corner. On the 17th of August 1837, Corn's fought and beat William Butler at Stonyford in Derbyshire, and on the 4th of November, Bill Boniford at Sunrise Hill. Again on the 3rd of April 1838, Corn fought Bendigo, and after a gruelling 76 rounds, it was Bendigo this time who was disqualified for going down without being struck. Cornt claimed the heavyweight championship of England, but this was not generally accepted at the time. On the 24th of June of the same year, Cornt was scheduled to fight Bendigo, but the bout was cancelled. And on the 26th of October, Cornt defeated Bill Brassey at Six Mile Bottom near Cambridge in 101 rounds. Following year, on the 2nd of February 1841, Corn fought Nick Ward for the heavyweight championship of England, but a crowd forced the referee to disqualify Corn for an alleged blow striking Ward when he was down. However, Corn avenged his defeat on the 11th of March of the same year, defeating Ward in 35 rounds at Long Marston to become the heavyweight champion of England. Later that year, Corn sailed to America to challenge Tom Hire to a world championship bout but Hyer never replied, and Cornt returned to England the following year with the American giant Charles Freeman, who he then managed. In 1845, he was challenged for the English heavyweight title by Bendigo, and the third epic fight was on. On the 9th of September, Cornt lost with a disputable decision after 93 rounds, where it was alleged Cornt went down without a blow striking him. Cornt denied the accusation that the title was given to Bendigo and Cornt finally announced his retirement. Following his retirement, Cornt worked firstly as a farm labourer before becoming landlord of a coach and horses pub on St Martin's Lane in London, where his prosperity and wealth grew. Here he would entertain the crowds with his party trick of flattening a pewter tanker with only the fingers of one hand. On Wednesday the 15th of January 1851, in the early hours of the morning while Cornt was away on business, a devastating fire broke out in the pub, destroying the premises and killing two of his children along with their maid. Cornt came out of retirement and on the 21st of September 1857 fought Nat Langham, where after a punishing 60 rounds, both men were too exhausted to continue and a draw was called. Cornt's wife died in 1859 and still mourning her loss and that of his children previously, his health and general demeanour went downhill and on the 10th of September 1861, Ben Cornt, still residing in St Martin's Lane, London, died of pneumonia. He was buried outside St Mary Magdalene Church in Hucknall, near the graves of his two children and his wife. It is said with some conjecture that the clock tower of the Palace of Westminster is named Big Ben after Ben Cornt. Some will argue against this, but nothing is documented to prove otherwise, and, in the end, why not? St Martin's Lane is only a short walk away, after all.